Come on, girls, time to go. Okay, well, <clears throat> let's just do a radiation foilage check. <sighs> it's just a uh, hmm, poplar. Right by the duck pond. Have some new stuff coming out. <clears throat> Cars pretty well got I guess depending on the temperature, you gotta pretty well wait. It seems about 40 hours before the spots and burn marks start really showing up. Okay, come on, guys. Okay, I guess that depends what falls on it, too. Eh? Guys, come on, Mo, let's go. Come on, you guys, we're filming here. Let's go. Come on, come on. Mo, come on, guys. Lead the way. Get going. So we are starting to get some deformers, but we'll just keep an eye on it. This is the path walking out of the duck pond. And now I found some footage from April the 20th or so, apparently. Of big pine trees across the way. Shot with the same style of camera. Well, I probably had it on a different lens configuration, but let's go up there anyhow. We did take some just a few days ago. It's obvious down in the list. This here is the same jack pine. I'm gonna put this link. Stop guys, stop, stop. This is the one I said seemed to have aborted its pine cones, so I don't know what's happening now. Well, the lower branches are definitely going into cone. Yeah, and there's the browning a chlorosis state to try and make a second attempt at uh, set and seed. It very well could be. I um, this is the first time I ever lived in this kind of a some year forest so I've only been looking at a few stands of similar jack pine for a few years now I'm not a Okanagan desert boy well I am now but That's its neighbor. It's definitely gotten worse in two days. We haven't had any hot weather. Like I say, we seem to have had a abort cone mode going on. Yeah, wrong side. Okay, guys. Well, this is a real fast uh, grass variety. Seeds are really sticky though. Kind of a pain in the fur. Right there. Okay. Kiraganas. Or rose hips, pardon me. Going through a sprout, like I say, because we've had three good rains about two, three days apart. 
And that's that's like really good for her. Especially this time of year. Oh, come, come, come. Come on. Come, come. Come. Okay. Just be nice. Okay, stop. A little bit of traffic. It happens once in a while. Oh, well, look at who, who came. Okay, well, let's just finish our tree survey here. And we'll get some eagle in. Well, just don't think about it. We'll just have to get lucky. It's quite obvious a lot of these birds have that. I can tell if you're looking at them kind of thing, you know? And it is definitely a component of the, uh, <clears throat> shall we say, atmospheric ambience. Which is everything from humidity, temperature, wind, EMF, geomagnetics. Let's just take a climb back up these jack pines. And... Now, if there's any uh, experts on these, by all means, chime in. Cause, um, I, I haven't even planted a jack pine yet. I know we didn't, I didn't see the sclerosis, the other three, four springs. Yeah, four springs. And this wasn't our first wet one. Like I say, last year was wet and cool in the late, late, late spring. This one, surprisingly, even later. It up, shaping up to be wetter too. Okay, let's have a look here. Deserts and semi-deserts are just such lovely, 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 lovely places. When they get a little bit of rain, it's that. Natural plants have learned to take advantage of that and they generally flower all real quick. As soon as they got enough moisture they don't piss around. They've developed banking strategies for their growing nutrients and they just pump it right out. So needless to say, this is true of everywhere, fauna and flora. all have a different vibration that meaning how they all get along together change one thing and everything else changes especially over the long term so getting a little closer here <coughs> you can see the um some examples of the old damage there. If I can have the sunlight, maybe.
Okay, now we definitely got a chlorosis process happening, but why? <clears throat> In this case, is it trying to heal up the uh, the spots, the burn marks? Like that right there. Oop, sorry, plant. You see that, eh? So try responding to that stressor. Whoops. Jeez. Okay. Right. I'm just putting that question out there. To those that are intimately familiar with this microclimate, this we'll just call it light vibration. I mean, obviously, nobody's that familiar with when it's altered like this. But... Hey guys! It's amazing how these little buggers stay uh, green. They got quite a good root system. Surprisingly deep, too. Kind of trim some to get the bus parked in there. See, are we aborting our berries? Yeah. They say there's, of course, I can't say why, <clears throat> what all contributed to it, but definitely the bees are very late. domestic ones are being kept in, in cold storage or something. The owner's not wanting to uh, sacrifice to the Fukushima radiation. But on the other hand, guys, um, you know, maybe hold back like part of your crop and let some of them out there to do their things. Because if this gets real serious, there's only one fucking way through it. The few that the few life forms that can fucking survive their mutations and then they repopulate amongst all the upheaval now it goes for anyone doing any kind of fucking agriculture or horticulture or verticulture or, or, or any of it if that's your thing is farming life then you know just keep this in mind eh there's greater bottom lines than just that that one we always had hanging in front of our nose on that banker's pole. <laughs> you know that yellow kind of orangey pointy one? Like, like Bugs Bunny's always going for? Oh, here we go. Here guys. Before we end this video, we'll just take a few more plant samples. There we go, some beauty. Uh, a few birds. Going to try and balance these things out, talking about all this, this realities, horrific realities. It's nice to have a few, find some sort of good inside of all this necessary ickiness we must look at. And, struggle to try and describe before we can even make rational decisions on how to lessen the damage or at least to at least make something survive if only our struggle lessons of how we tried see I tell you this fucking shit happened before you guys hear about all this Atlanta shit that's a lot of you People feel strongly it was talking about something, and I'm telling you it was. You know them old expressions? Nothing new under the sun. That's uh, you know, kind of a poor expression, but but in a way it has it has relevance, and I'll just end on that and we'll take a look at this empty crow's nest or 
Eagle's Nest or whatever. Let's see if anyone's moved back in yet. Just take one more pine tree sample. So I'm kind of thick at now what I know about other plants. And that's probably the best indicator. Figuring out what it does with its seed. Because that's the tip of any branch, any piece of plant, that's what we'll call a meristematic tissue, which is the actual correct term in monocot stem, but that's where the brains are, the hormones, the pituitaries, the thyroids, and they do their little tweak and change and they send down chemicals to the rest of the plant to help differentiate what it's going to do, fruit or flower or branch or bark or stem or shoot or root or or trophy so that that's where all the change happens and kind of if you pay attention to that along with what is changing around it you know like weather insects nutrition whatever even light uh, like somebody putting up a traffic light can actually influence these things where there was no light at night before um, you know, photosynthesis wise. That's uh, kind of the layman's place where to look and get familiar with looking. Here's some more mutations. No, no, stay up here, guys. You don't see the mutations on the older leaves, <clears throat> which indicates it was induced. It's not. A regressive gene just pulling through because of a little stress. But we never know for sure, eh? Can we find our guesses if we pay attention? I just keep telling everyone, index it, you know? Which could just, you don't have to get big scientific geeky, put on the bottle, Pepsi bottle glasses and the white coat and pen protector in your pocket there. Just incorporate it into your normal habit. Well, this is where I always go, you know, I usually sit down at this bench on my little walk, my dog walk, whatever. I walk to the park to feed the pigeons, whatever. And so I'll just frequent these same plants. I'll keep a little diary, I'll make a little routine of it. I'll try and be consistent each day and mention things that have changed, or, you know, once a week or whatever. Make your video sample. Bear, no, no, we're not going down there, bud. Back up. Bear, bear, back up. Back up. Sorry. Oh, well, apparently I gotta go. <laughs> so, what's that? Uh, I'll just leave that out there. Yeah, guys, just two videos trying to put some sort of appropriate title or tag in it or whatever. And so, you know, like a few months from now, um, <clears throat> when we've got the uh, lower levels of the science community reassigned and all them science students and trying to work on their theses and they'll, they'll be doing, you know, plant biologists will be doing some on the... Uh, how it killed off our trees and mutated them and changed everything. Like this is this is this is what we're going to be doing. You see, dealing with our pile of shit. There's all kinds of new growth. So this is just low-level research, and like I say, the value of it is by trying to be consistent, describe anything that's changed. And, uh, you know, give time cues and, and whatnot so it 
they can actually, if they see something really important, they can start to back it, back research it and say, uh, well, you know, go through the weather patterns. Okay, well, what was there and what was there in his earlier shot two weeks ago and what was the weather in between and blah, 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 you see? So like I'm saying, just <clears throat> collect at whatever level works for you. And keep in mind, this is all evidence for class action lawsuits. And we're going to need the money. If this thing, uh, you know, we're, we're going to need the money to deal with our health issues. Short term and long term, when it turns into cancers and stuff. They'll have lots of crap. Lots of sugar pills, lots of make it worse. They'll have all kinds of things sprouting up that they'll be trying to flog us. Oh, and the government will be trying to step in at one point to hold our money in trust because we're children. Yeah, I think not. I'll take my fucking money and I'll find my own fucking cures or my own legacy to leave my fucking compensation to. And the biggest part of that legacy will be, at least we fucking tried. We, we fucking tried. As much stupefying bullshit and chemicals and, 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 and subjugative fucking programmings and teachings and trainings that have been fucking fed into us right and left to be the perfect little fucking mindless consumers to forever be stupefied children moronic fucking adults as, as much as all that's gone we can at least say we fucking tried what greater a legacy is that <clears throat> those that could do nothing will wish the fuck they had at some point and maybe your conscientious example and mine and all those in between well at least Give them something dear to hold on with their filthy mindlessness that went against the meaning of life, which is survival. They'll, they'll, they'll have our examples, if nothing else.